Now it is important to note that I do not see myself as a prophet, but compared to the people in charge, the religious leaders we have now, the secret societies, you know, I do seem like one. And what I recommend is far more righteous and it's far more to the point and far more practical than anything they've ever said. This video is about a three point plan. I've titled the document Three Things That Need to Be Done to Save Society. I'm going to tell you why we need to cleanse the selfish, restore religion, and to make dating righteous and fair. This will deal with the problems of the past, the present, and the future. It will it won't, you know, change the past, but it will help correct the errors that have come upon us as a result of the inaction of the righteous and the indifference of the common man and the wickedness of the iniquitous in the past. Now, many people will say things like, oh, this guy is crazy and things of this nature. Those of you who know me know I don't make things up. I don't joke around. I don't kid. I don't play games. Okay? There's nothing wrong with me. I don't have a mental illness. And if I did, it wouldn't change the fact that I'm right about what I'm about to say. Nor would it change the fact that our mental health system is rather abhorrent, rather inadequate, rather superficial, and rather pitiful. With that being said, let us get to the truth, shall we? Number one, get rid of greedy people, selfish people, and secret societies. This does not necessarily mean killing all these people. However, mankind has a stubborn nature. Then there is the fact that these people will not want to give up their powers by doing the right thing. Therefore, it almost certainly means killing them, for I see no other way. Number two, Restore the two most important Abrahamic faiths. There are no philosophies that are better for mankind and understand the spiritual world as well as these faiths. In the world you will find complete evil scum who will counter by making, who will attempt to counter at least, by making the illogical claim that these religions are oppressive to women or that they limit freedom, freedoms. People should not have the freedom to do evil to each other and I agree with the morality laid out in these religions. I also believe that people should have the choice to either live in a Christian nation or an Islamic state. So there should be a bunch of countries, pretty much the countries we have now, but they all should either be a Christian nation with Christian rules, laws that reflect the Bible's morality, or laws that reflect the principles and the morality laid out in the Quran. And Last but not least, this actually wrote, you know, a little bit more than both of the first two points combined in my elaboration here. Um, because remember, this is making dating righteous and fair. And this, and I, I felt the need to do that because it's, it's a little bit more difficult to understand why this must be done. But it has to do with the future. You know, the first pretty much has to, the first two have to do with the mistakes of the past and to make the present better. And the third is more for the future, but it definitely does have to do with the present, the present and the mistakes of the past as well. So put a strong stress on convincing people to date and or marry people who are similar to them in mind, body, and soul. The reason why is that this is a fair way to match people. Also, people should desire to judge people by deem piety and character. Part of being a righteous and fair person is applying these things to your lives. Or to your life. In a materialistic society, good-looking men who are less than rich have it the worst in dating. This is because, or when it comes to dating, this is because of them being deprived of what they naturally would have in a fair world. The ugly, less than rich man would naturally tend to match with an ugly woman. So this is why an ugly, less than rich man doesn't have it worse than a um, good-looking, less than rich man, even though they're in a similar situation when it comes to women that they can get. Anyway, moving on. Uh, duh, duh, duh. The good-looking, less-than-rich man 
or less than rich woman use her looks to get something among the horde of rich men seeking good looking women. Now, I think a lot of you don't understand this principle, so let me lay this out to you, okay? If you have the potential to be great and you live life like an average person, you know, or you, you accomplish the amount, the same amount as, as someone who doesn't have the, as great potential as you do, then you have it worse than that person who's living life exactly like you. Because in a fair and balanced world, you should have been great. You know, you have this great potential, you have this great gift that you're not allowed to use. You know, if I gave you a million dollars and said, you can't touch it and you were poor, wouldn't that be worse than a poor person who doesn't have that, who's living poor? That is the same reason why a good looking man who is less than rich has it worse than an a less than good looking man who is less than rich in today's dating climate. So anyway, um, moving on. The good looking less than rich woman uses her looks to get someone among the horde of rich men seeking good looking women. This means she tends to get what she wants out of dating and has the choice of single men while the good looking less than rich man does not tend to. And of course, you know, she also, <laughs> arguably, she has the choice of not single men as well, but we won't get into that. <laughs> All right, this is not fair, and it is un an undesirable effect of hypergamy. Hypergamy and gold digging are part of spiritual bottom feeding, which leads to the destruction of society and the digression back into a selfish, a selfish, godless society. Society cannot be allowed to revert to paying lip service and having a large percent of spiritual bottom feeders. For those of you who don't know, that's the Satanists, the worst criminals, the LGBT community, the feminists, um, the atheists, and the racists in that order. Now remember, if you are in the higher category, one of the worst categories, you know, then that's the one you're, you're put in for the sake of what level of the spiritual bottom feeder you are. Of course, within those levels, there are you know, subcategories and what have you, but you get what I'm saying. So again, to remind you what has to be done, and I'd actually prove it beyond any doubt if you, if you have any insight or any common sense, is you have to clean, cleanse the selfish. You have to restore religion. What I mean by that is the two most important Abrahamic faiths, Christianity and Islam in different nations. I, well, I've elaborated, so I'm just telling you again in the short version. And you have to make dating righteous and fair. All this helps correct the problems that have been made by the spiritual bottom feeders in the past and to those who are indifferent and to those who roll with it. You know, the problems that th these groups of people, for the most part, created. Um, and they also help make the world a better place. And they also help um, with the future. Now, I'm going to try to address... Last, I'm trying to make this about 10 minutes. The last two minutes, I'm going to try, try to address... Uh, what the opposition view will say. You know, you're gonna have a bunch of atheists who just simply can't grasp the idea that being a materialistic atheist will always be worse than being a religious person who's selfish. There's no way around that. They just refuse to grasp it. They're just bootlicking to the elite way too much. They're trying to say there is no God and make the elite a bunch of gods, a bunch of rich people gods. So, so hypergamy can be rampant and all the things that have destroyed our society, which I've thoroughly explored in my other videos. And I've definitely told you enough for you to understand that I'm right in this video alone. Okay, so they're going to attack the fact that, oh, maybe there isn't a God, so why should we be forced to live life? You know, I'm not saying that you should be forced to attend church or a mosque in these nations. I am saying you should be forced to live by the morality that is given to us by these nations. The fact that the elite are a bunch of atheists and Satanists and occultists and people who are interested in um, Buddhism and Eastern philosophy totally gives that away. So, you know, and so let me address, you know, this idea that Christianity is oppressive to women is absolutely disgusting. Just because we don't let women walk all over man and, you know, have a huge advantage in life when the rules laid out in the Bible are quite fair for women, you know. And I've thoroughly gone over that in other videos, talking about gender roles and how women rule the night and men rule the day and how there's a balance and so on and so forth. Ironically, the pagan religions that these uh, witchcraft, love, and satanic feminists subscribe to um, understand that, and they they tend to put women on the, as uh, uh, symbolized by the, the nighttime deities, and the men tend to be symbolized by the daytime deities in a lot of these religions. 
uh, especially these uh, the cultist version of these religions. So it's very funny that they would act like they don't know that's the case. Um, they just basically want to damage the order of things to attack the family structure. And all this helps the family structure as well. You know, when everybody is just taught to date what they are. And for example, if I'm a good looking guy, I'm in shape, I'm very smart, I'm very spiritual, I deserve that. You know, period. Money is kind of like, money is, is, a, is a resource. You know, just who has the coolest fucking hat? Should he uh, magically jump out of what he would be given naturally and get, you know, is an ugly, fat, fucking stupid idiot, you know, has a cool little hat with a little propeller on top of it or something. Should he get a super fucking model who's spiritual and, and wise? No. You know, we, t we do see a little bit of this where wise women choose the type of man that is fitting. To, I know I went over, you know, uh, is befitting of them, you know, is, is good enough for them. You know, but we don't see this for the most part, and society suffers. You know, the judgment of women and men in a materialistic society has been proven to be harmful to society as a whole, to the world as a whole. You know, so what needs to be done is people need to be educated as to what to be, you know, how to be better. And I don't see this happening as long as you have these selfish, greedy people and secret societies. These are the people that will not allow society as a whole to be educated in the proper way in order to come to the proper and wise decision. If we don't see people come to the wise decision, which is very obvious to the most righteous and wise among us, then society is not doing its job. Why wouldn't, you know, as intelligent of, uh, of, of uh, life forms as humans are, why wouldn't we all come, all, at least almost all of us come to the wise decision about these things? This, this isn't the most complicated things in the world. This is very basic, foundational, common sense, practical, logical things, you know? So when you don't see people coming to this, these conclusions generally and commonly, there's something deeply wrong. What is stopping them? What is stopping them? A bunch of greedy people, selfish people, indifferent people, and secret societies. So what we need to do, we need to get rid of the greedy, selfish, and secret societies. The indifferent people, hey, you're indifferent anyway. You're going get to go get with the program anyway. So if we get rid of, you know, we don't have to get rid of you. But we have to get rid of these people. And since we cannot, you know, re-educate these people, we cannot get these people to do the right thing. A lot of them know what's right and wrong, but they're just so evil and greedy. They're not going to budge. They need to be fucking killed. They need to be murdered. They need to be fucking round up and executed. And everyone needs to know why they were executed. And everyone needs to know it had to be done. That we did not take great pleasure in this. At least not all of us. I probably would. <laughs> That's a story for another day. But it had to be done. They're fucking scum. They're getting away in the way of righteousness. Human progress. They are causing the destruction of us all. They're destroying the earth. They're destroying the family. They're causing wars. They're promoting Satanism. They're spiritually destroying us. They're mentally destroying us with drugs, prescription drugs, illicit drugs, street drugs, all this stuff. They're just destroy, 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 destroy. Nothing is going to stop them. We need to kill them and we need to institute and impress and instill sentiments and philosophies in humanity that will prevent the world from ever reaching this point again. Now, this is the point of view of someone, uh, you know, as if, you know, there is no God and just based on morality alone. That's what needs to be done. If there is a God, guess what? The same thing needs to be done. My name is Chukwu Mecca. I have completely crushed the opposition view and watched their satanic attempts at fucking rebutting what I've just said. Thank you.